Our Down the Drain series has now taken us into some very unusual spaces. Tonight, we continue our special series looking at the underground canal system in New Orleans. Yeah, Tom Trung personally explored a canal beneath the Lafitte Greenway looking for debris that could prevent that canal from moving flood water out of your neighborhood. And in part two, Down the Drain Underground. Tan shows us why the canals right in front of our eyes may be the bigger concern. David, I'm coming on down. In part one, we took you underground into the St. Louis Canal. Hey, cameraman coming down. Cameraman, you got the camera holding? Yeah, you got it under control. You got, you got to hold these holes and come down till you get about right here in the middle. This is solid port here, right here. There were some stumbles along the way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A healthy amount of roaches. It's a good sign. It means we have oxygen. And a new perspective on what's happening beneath the surface. This is a lateral line that moves water from the surface down into the canal. And from what I'm seeing here, it seems somewhat clogged. And I think this is probably a little bit of sediment, some dirt. But to give you some perspective of what this does, this is moving the water from the surface into this canal. And to show you here, the top of the canal to the bottom of the canal is roughly nine feet. Realistically, during a heavy rain event like the one that we saw on July 10th, this entire canal from the floor of the canal to the top of it would be filled with water. It's part of the drainage network of New Orleans that combined stretches for 180 miles. Its importance can't be overstated. It's very crucial, obviously. I mean, if you can't get the water to the drainage pump stations, it doesn't matter how many pumps you have working uh, because the water's not going to get there to get pumped up. July 10th was probably the worst flooding many of us have seen in some time. The difference in the last couple of years, certain neighborhoods that normally didn't take on much water got swamped. One really big one happened on Mother's Day. Um, we saw significant flooding during that event. Um, and then July 10th was, was really a, a huge event too, where we saw significant flooding. The most that I had seen in many years here in the city. After the July flood, the Sewage and Water Board conducted an after action review. During that after action review, um, we identified several areas of, of concern after that July 10th event, one of which was uh, this canal just on the other side of Grange Pump Station 1, the open canal. The board's general superintendent, Bob Turner, says they had help in identifying that problem spot. On social media, we actually you know, found the uh, the video that showed that, that the banks of that canal were overflowing. Um, so we knew that you know there was something strange happening there. So the board started inspecting the open portion of the canal, which is more susceptible to getting clogged than the underground canals. When you have an open canal that then goes underground, that's where you have the, the possibility of a lot of debris getting into, into the underground system. Just because it's exposed. Just at, because at it's points. exposed, right. It's, in late August, crews pulled out of the canal, a car they say likely dates back to Hurricane Katrina. It surprised all of us. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have been uh, all that surprised to find that there was some amount of debris in there. Um, but to find a car that uh, had obviously been in there um, for many years, and we've traced it back to probably Katrina was the event that put that car in there. Um, it just kind of shows you that uh, it's been a long time since, since we've devoted a lot of effort into getting in there and, and inspecting these canals. Along with that car, the inspection found about 22,000 tons of debris in the length of the canal, which stretches about three miles. In September, the board reported that it removed just a fraction of the debris, about 950 tons. Inspecting for and then removing the debris cost about $575,000. Before the July 10th flooding, did we have a schedule for inspections? Was there something in place at that point? There was no schedule in place at that time. Why not? Um, I think over the years, that just fell by the wayside. Um, just like a lot of things that, uh, that, have, that, that uh, were being done perhaps before Katrina, even back uh, maybe as far as the 1980s. Some of those things uh, just kind of fell by the wayside. Uh, can't say for sure why that happened. Um, I think that uh, part of it had to do with uh, the availability of funds um, and just keeping some of those older programs going. Despite the inspections, Turner says crews couldn't pinpoint anything underground that could be directly tied to the increased flooding in certain neighborhoods, but they've only scratched the surface. 
Many of the canals in New Orleans haven't been inspected in decades. It's estimated that the canal we toured was last checked in 1997 at the earliest, but the inspection may have been actually done in 1979. In the future, what we hope to do is to do, you know, come through and do a five-year plan where we're inspecting everything. That will take more money, something the board doesn't have. If crews found 22,000 tons of debris in one canal, we can only imagine what's happening in others. We're concerned with the whole network. Of course, you know, when you have flooding that we had over the summer in areas that were not historically those that flooded, you wonder, hey, what's blocking this water? You know, what, you know, what exactly is keeping the water from the streets to getting in these underground culverts? H.J. Bosworth is a civil engineer and lead researcher for levees.org, a watchdog group on flood protection. We showed him some of the video we captured underground. It's unseen and unknown to everyone else. You know, you all went in there and saw what you saw, and you know, I'm glad that what you found was fairly clear. There are still miles and miles of this that, you know, we'd all we would all like to see, nice and clean and clear, like the images right. that you showed me earlier. When you see what we're facing in terms of debris in the canals, subsurface and open canals. Do you have the money to continue this inspection on a regular basis? Right now I have some money, um, and so we're looking to see if we, um, if we need to try to get some, some additional work done before the end of this year. Um, we have some funds available that would have to be moved out of other areas in order to take care of that. It's safe to assume many people wouldn't have confidence in the board moving money or attention out of other areas. From water main breaks, boil water advisories, to critical drainage problems, the board has its hands full. And given the multiple meltdowns going back to the Landry administration and beyond, the board may have a tough time getting the public to agree to a new proposed stormwater fee to get much needed projects done. We know that what was going on then is not something we should really put our trust in. What's going on now with the new leadership there and you know, the new administration you know, show us that you're doing a good job and the city of New Orleans may go ahead and, you know, write a fatter check in January. Right now, we're only able to take those baby steps, okay, and, and we're, in the meantime, we're keeping everything going and we're planning for the future. Unless that future includes more money, these canals, which often go unnoticed, may go unchecked. Tom Trung, Eyewitness News. Well, so far, there's no clear timetable to when regular inspections of the canal system will take place. To see our extensive down-the-drain investigations, go to WWLTV.com.